We talked a couple days ago about 13-year-olds getting married in Idaho. What's the true story? Well, we talked with the state representative in Idaho who's trying to put an end to this practice and, and asked her, why are the Republicans voting against, you know, putting an end to this practice? Her answer is shocking. Check it out. Your comments in the comments section. You can subscribe to the channel right here. I read an article on Daily Kos about the age of consent, or the age of, the, the age of marriage, rather, in Idaho, and how a state representative was trying to uh, raise that uh, to, uh, as I recall, 16, uh, to be at least 16 in order to get a marriage license, and how Republicans voted that down. And I had a number of people, after I went on a rant about this, uh, call in and say, wait a minute, I've got the uh, Idaho state law right here in front of me, and it says that you've got to be... I don't recall if it was 16 or 17, but whatever it was, that, that it, it was already there. And, and so I was like, well, what's going on with this? And, and so on the line with us is Representative Melissa Wintrow. She's the uh, Idaho State Representative from the 19th District, a Democrat uh, in the legislature of Idaho. Uh, legislature.idaho.gov is that website. And uh, Representative Wintrow, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Me too. Uh, now, so I understand that you were the principal author of this legislation that would have essentially put an end to 13-year-olds getting married in Idaho. Um, uh, first of all, is it actually a fact that 13, 14, 15-year-olds, mostly girls, are, are actually still in this day and age getting married in Idaho? Well, those numbers have declined, but um, it is still legal to do so. So that's what I was trying to do, actually, is create a floor for our marriage age. And I worked with the Idaho Coalition Against Sexual and Domestic Violence and um, drafted legislation to create a floor. And what I thought was pretty... Uh, conservative legislation. I know there are a couple states now that have gone to 18 as the marriage age, which makes sense because that's the age of majority in most states for, you know, um, all kinds of things from voting to cigarettes to, you know, signing contracts and so forth. So it makes sense. Um, but you also have to look at what you think you can pass in the um, uh, political landscape that you're in. And so I thought, well, let's at least create a floor, no one under 16. But if a 16 or 17-year-old wanted to get married, they, they were consenting, parent consented, also have a court look for it, um, mostly because we're trying to prevent any kind of coercion or abuse. And if that all three of those things passed, then okay. And we would align with our statutory rape law because it wouldn't make sense to allow somebody older to um, get a judge's approval to marry somebody and then kind of slip through that loophole. Right. So, so, uh, so the fact of the matter is that a 13-year-old, um, arguably even a 12-year-old in Idaho, could legally get married right now. They need their parents' consent and a, and a judge's signing off on it, which has happened in the past and 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 certainly in in the in the relatively recent past maybe not 12 year olds but you know 15 16 yeah. um, 14 year olds um, and and how did your republican colleagues uh, respond to your proposing this legislation to just you know bring the marriage age up to 16 in Idaho well i had a license two, issued yeah. age I had two prominent Republicans co-sponsoring. One, arguably a senator who's one of the most conservative senators in the in the um, how in the state house, uh, Senator Thane, and then Representative Carolyn Troy. Um, mo I, most of the arguments that I heard from my colleagues were um, they didn't want the court involved at a 16 or 17 year old level. Mm. They thought parents should be able to control. The, the decisions of their kids, and they did not like the statutory rape uh, alignment because in our state, it says a 16-year-old may not consent to anyone three years older mm. and a 17-year-old not three years older. Be otherwise, you could be charged with statutory rape. So, again, it doesn't make any sense to allow a 30-year-old to marry a 17-year-old and get past that other law. And um, I, I think just common sense, developmentally, I remember what I was like as a graduate from college and a 17-year-old. Yeah. Um, huge developmental difference. And um, I, I, I think, again, when we look at the detriment, especially to girls, I mean, these are disproportionately young girls that are getting married versus boys, right? Right. 
And if we look at the negative impacts to girls, um, I, I think we owe it to our state to look out for the most vulnerable and make sure that people's rights are being afforded. And that means child rights. Yeah, the, and the, the, the marriage advocacy group Unchained at Last has been doing research on this. And they estimated that during the decade of 2000 to 2010, 248,000 children were married in the United States. And they're defining children as under 17 years old. Um, actual right. data from 38 states showed more than 167,000 children wed in that uh, decade. Um, there are 12 states that did not provide data for this. 85% were girls, 77% yeah. of whom were married to adult men that would be, you know, uh, no longer teenagers, over, over 21. Kentucky, right. Washington State, Florida, and Texas join Idaho in the, quote, 13-year-olds get married here, end quote, club, while Louisiana and South Carolina reported marriages recently where at least one party was just 12 years old. So uh, you're saying that your, your Republican colleagues objected to this, and in fact voted down this legislation, killed this legislation, because uh, they, they objected to the court being involved. That's kind of a libertarian argument, I guess. You know, we don't yeah. want big government in our face. Um, but don't you think that there's also a, a huge piece of misogyny in here, that this is the last vestige of the absolute control of men over women? I mean, if a, if a girl gets married when she's 13, 14, 15 years old, and particularly if she becomes pregnant, her life is over as an independent entity uh, for all you know, intents and purposes. Uh, at least it seems to me. I mean, she hasn't even finished a simple education. Well, and I guess that's what I was saying. The detriment to girls is really significant. We already have a wage disparity in our state, or excuse me, our country. Um, and we know that if a, if a girl gets married below 18, I mean, just the dramatic increase, they're not going to continue their education, which impacts their ability to earn money and to take care of themselves. I remember when I was appointed as Boise State's first women's center director, I worked with a lot of women returning to school. If I had a dime for every woman who said, I didn't finish my education, I got married young, I got kids, my husband left me, and now I'm left to care for them, I need my education. Um, uh, I heard that story over and over, so I am concerned. We, we need to make sure that we have uh, opportunities for girls to pursue their dreams and education unfettered. And then, I, you know, you read stories where there are some parents aren't looking out for the interests of their kids. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're abusive, and maybe they, you know, can't take care of them, so they marry them off young. That's why I think the court is so important there. Um, again, I don't think anybody under 16 should be getting married, period. I th I think it probably should be 18, but I was trying to provide a compromise to at least put the court size on it. And, the, and a judge testified that uh, it's not a long process, but it is an important one. Um, it's another set of eyes. Some judges will take the parties separately so they can chat and make sure it's uncoerced and, and it's not an abusive situation. Um, again, I'm interested in safety of children yeah. and making sure we're looking out for the most vulnerable among us. So, you know, the, the bottom line here, it's uh, you have to jump through some hoops, but it's legal to get married at, at basically 13 in Idaho. You're trying to put a stop to that. We have a situation across the country where uh, 100, over 100,000, 167,000 yeah. in just one decade, children got married. Um, there, you know, there's there's a half a dozen states, a little more than a half a dozen states where this is possible, and and you're trying to put an end to this. Your Republican right. colleagues shot that down. Ha, and now that this has gotten some publicity, are any of them reconsidering? Oh, you know, so, you know, people came to me afterward, like, you know, I get what you're trying to do, but you know, I just don't think the government should be involved. And and folks did not like the statutory rape alignment. I mean, some mm -hmm. folks believe like a 23 year old should be able to marry a 17 year old. And I'm just, I'm just like, hey, why don't you just wait till they're through college? We, right. we had a young woman who came and testified and shared a story about her two friends who um, had gotten married under 18 and were in abusive situations and so forth. So, um, again, I thought this was a modest compromise, sets the floor. And, and the thing that I'm, I'm a little bit dumbfounded about is that um, we just passed a bill yesterday that requires parents to opt in to sexual health education, and and I'm just kind of at a loss because you mean kids don't okay. get sexual health education in school unless their parents specifically ask for it, and it's not well, the default. Well, that's 
that's what this bill would ask. I mean, right now you have to opt out if right. you're, you know, you have some, you know, uh, disagreement with curriculum. But this opt-in procedure would create a lot of red tape and potentially problems for access to knowledge and really good information. So I, I was just kind of at a loss that we would uh, we would make parents opt in for sexual health education, but we um, we couldn't pass that marriage and bill. And did that pass? Um, it went through the House. It goes to the Senate wow. now. So. Is, the, is the House controlled by Republicans in Idaho? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's, there's 70 members. There are 14 Democrats. Okay. So, so that explains a lot. Re State yeah. Representative Melissa Wintrow, she's uh, representing the 19th District of Idaho.